Troy is climbing the last blue gum in the backyard to remove its remaining limbs. The heavy, spindly limbs of this tree are both a fall and fire hazard and are not safe so close to our house and garden. These limbs couldn't be removed at an earlier stage because they were tangled up in a neighbouring tree that we have since felled. Unfortunately, we couldn't drop this tree at its trunk because its diameter was too big for any of the tools we have at the farm. Whilst it looks like a calm and peaceful scene, down on the ground I was pretty scared about Troy's safety. He has experience with a chainsaw and carrying out weight reductions on gum trees, but I still felt completely helpless on the ground filming him precariously swinging in the breeze on those lanky limbs. Even sailing across the bite, or being caught out in 50 knots off the New South Wales coast, was less nerve wracking than the uneasiness I felt watching Troy some 30 metres or 100 feet above me with a chainsaw whirring in his hands. Tree workers can and do die every year felling gum trees in Australia. Tree surgery and logging rank as the second most dangerous profession in both Australia and the United States, only after commercial fishing, which Troy actually spent at least 10 years of his life doing. Incidentally, due to the use of heavy machinery and sometimes chemicals, farming is also ranked in the top 10 of both the Australian and United States list of most dangerous professions. So it seems Troy will spend the majority of his life following dangerous pursuits. But there's nothing like encountering real danger on a day-to-day -day basis to live in the present moment. We both felt a similar sentiment when having to keep our wits about us exploring the Kimberley with the ever-present saltwater crocodiles as our predators.
feel a little bit better once the fire season comes now that we don't have a combustible bomb 10 meters from the house. I feel a bit tired now, but I'm sure come summertime and the, the windy win winter, I'll be glad not to have a massive flammable limb dropping blue gum <laughs> hanging over the house. So that tree was exciting for a couple of reasons. Had um, had some enchants up in there. Some really, <laughs> they bite and it feels, it's not as long lived, but it feels like a wasp just stung you. It's pretty, um, pretty unpleasant while you're hanging off a rope. And especially when they run down your shirt and start doing it, you gotta stop what you're doing and sort it out. The other thing, these eucalypts, they've got a propensity to grow their limbs really, really close together. So something like, I don't know, an oak tree or something like that, big wide bits and they're easy to move through and around. This is a real struggle and I'm out of practice as well. So I sort of had lowered myself down then I had to squeeze through bits that were just, just a bit narrow. This is a case in point, like, look at that angle, it's really close. And another thing that happens with these gum trees when that happens is the limbs grow pretty close together at the outset, shoot for the sky, and then they start to thicken up and bark gets included, it's called included bark, funnily enough, gets included in this and makes a big fissure. And because the bark's there, it can trap water at sometimes and rot, and then the rot can go all the way down in here and then whack, one of those branches just peels out in a big wind. <laughs> They're just a total menace. Um, I would have preferred just about any other tree to be as close to the house than one of these blue gums. But uh, we've got to this point now. So we know a fella who's got a nice big saw. He's a, he's a proper timber faller. Um, so we'll have a chat to him and he can sort the rest of that stump out because it's just absolutely enormous. <laughs> And it's beyond me, but we've done the we've done all the weight reduction, so you should be able to just shoot it straight down there. Hopefully, miss miss the new fence that I'm going to be putting in soon. Have these blue gums. Last night we went for a drive to pick up two San and Dairy goats. They're about eight months old. They're sisters. They're lovely looking goats. Um, they spent last night in the trailer with some hay. They were pretty comfortable in there with some hay and some water. And we've just put a chain on their neck and taken them out and put them on a star picket like with a moving brace. We're just getting them used to being on a chain because we want to move them around the house and around the gardens and in places where there's lots of yummy forage for them, but places that we can't really fence. They're a little bit figuring out what's going on, which is understandable. So it might take them a couple of days to just get used to the new situation, but we're gonna, we're gonna buff out the old woodshed of the old house um, to have as their little den that they go into during the, day, uh, during the night. And any days when it's raining, we'll put them in there because goats don't like being wet at all. They like to be dry and comfortable. So wet, rainy days, um, the opposite to today, today's a beautiful day for introducing them to the property, but wet rainy days we'll have them in the woodshed with some yummy treats and nice and warm and dry. All right, here's our trailer that we went and fetched the goats. I'm, I'm coming to you today covered in goat hair and straw. I thought it'd make me more believable. <laughs> um, so this little six by four box trailer, it's got this really convenient cage, which is, which is great, but goats can climb and they're also susceptible to wet weather. We didn't know we might get caught in the rain. And also, I knew that we were going to be coming back on some gravel roads and I didn't want the goats in the back to be <laughs> like getting stone chipped. So six by four trailer. Um, so we got a six by eight tarpaulin and that gave us a foot of overlap or a little bit less on either side got these um, these bungee straps and we're able to attach it to the eyelets which gave it um, you know, a little bit of flexibility and so we got a, a nice rainproof cover and at the front if you come and have a look here um, it stopped all the wind from blasting through and also gave them that stone protection I was talking about but I'll just show you one more modification as well because goats can squeeze out of tight spaces we did one more thing as well So we just tensioned that as well so that there is a, you know, like something that's a bit harder than tarpaulin to squeeze out of. If you actually wanted this to be um, less prone to the wind and pushing down, 
You could actually put some um, ratchet straps, you know, one third and two thirds of the way across, and it would actually give you quite firm ribs that the tarp would pull down against. We didn't bother with doing that. It worked out really well. And also the straw that we put in the back here for them to lay on, as well as some rubber mat, it wasn't flying out of the trailer. It worked really well. The station wagon effect, which is where air is pulled back and in, um, did. It worked like that. So the, the air was coming in at the sides and we, we, weren't, we weren't blowing straw all over the neighbourhood. It's all, it's all still in there. At the moment, they're still a little bit nervous getting used to their new home, but we can just have a quick look at what I made up to make a swivel for around the star picket. It was pretty, pretty straightforward. So there's a fair bit of heavy duty water pipe around the place that fits over this star picket. Was, I've been eyeballing it for a little while. So I just got some of galvanized chain links um, that'll fit this four mil chain here. Um, just welded it on. It's where it doesn't really matter if you've got cocky poo welding. It's, um, it's fine. I just put plenty of weld there and I'm glad I did and just put these links here. So that gives us a, um, we can adjust the length just by selecting any link along that. And now the goat is free to sort of swivel that around. Goats are pretty notorious for tangling around. So if you just sort of um, shackled some chain on there, sooner or later because of the shape of the star picket, it would probably <laughs> snag up and then the goat would get ever, ever um, closing circles and, and get tighter and tighter and you just find goat and star picket married together. But at least this way, this can, this can swivel around. <laughs> There was a few frenet there was about a 45 minutes of pretty frenetic activity as these goats sort of like adjusted to the fact that there was dogs and cats and us and everything else. Mm. But they seem to be pretty calm now. So we've just been sort of trying to hang around them, speaking gently, trying to stop the dogs from barking, things like that. So they're just adjusting to our presence now. So they've been here for a little while, nothing bad's happened to them, so I think they I think they're getting used to it. So we're converting this, the old woodshed from the derelict house down below, into our goat enclosure. I think they're going to be quite comfortable in here. We're going to buff them out with lots of straw and things like that. And this will be when they, we eventually kid them, um, where they'll have their kids and where we'll milk them too. Um, yeah, so this is where they get to hang out. If it's going to rain, it's going to be a particularly wet day. We'll leave them in here and give them lots of treats and things like that in here. And then, yeah, sunny days, beautiful days. We'll take them out and put them somewhere on the property. Somewhere delicious. Yeah, so um, Troy's put this together with just bits and pieces uh, lying around on the property. This is actually a branch, isn't it, from the, this is blue gum? That's some of the blue gum. I peeled the, I peeled the bark off some. Mm -hmm. Some still waiting to be peeled, so. This is a peeled one. It's yep. peeled. Yeah. So we're throwing this up just as a, a cross piece and then we'll... Um... Super rustic. And then there's this old jarrah boards that we're using as well, nice and hard. Having a good time trying to get the, <laughs> the screws through it. Yeah, that's <laughs> all right though. So you found the screws in the, in the, in the skip bit? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And you've put this, this was lying around the property, this structural like pine beam here for the gate? Not, yeah, it was... Um... It was sort of set aside, set aside, but set it was aside. um, it was out in the weather, so it was one of the ones we put aside. Yeah. I mean, they're made to go out in the weather, so it didn't really matter, but yeah. Um, I liked it when I saw it, and now it's in use, so it's good. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> this is this is pretty hard as well. Yeah. So. Looking good. When we find the time, we will convert this temporary pallet gate into a hinge door with matching Jarra slats for our new dairy goat dowlings. We'll get those chains off them. Yep. In a sec. We'll just... Let them calm down from that. Let them have a bit of a sniff at their new... I've had the goats on grass all day um, and they haven't really touched it. But then I just threw in some branches of the fajoa tree and they're just tucking in. They love it. Look at that. You like it? Mmm. 
Yummy. We've got plenty of fajoa for you. I think you're going to like our blackberry as well. Yes, I think you are. This is more what they're used to, I think, being in a... Yeah. Well, as usual, it's the morning chaos in the kitchen, um, but I just did want to just say that Jet has finally started, our puppy dog, Jet, has just finally started earning her tucker. She actually brought us back a rabbit yesterday. So, um, I caught one for myself, and Jet caught one as well. So, what are you going to do with them, Pasky? Uh, slow cooker with leek and carrot, and just a slow cooker with vegetables and wine. Mm, and stuff. So. And then cream to top off. This is um, this is our, our first wild harvest of the land, so we're we're thankful for Jet. She's going to get a, a nice little share this time. So yeah, she doesn't normally get to share our dinners, but we <laughs> might we might just portion off a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's it. We're going to have rabbit tonight. Thanks to you all for watching until the end. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button as it really helps us out. We look forward to reading your comments and we'll see you next time for more adventures on the Ramshackle Ranch.